I'm Laurie Sen from the British Columbia Cancer Agency in Vancouver and I'm here at the ASH meeting. It's just the start of the meeting but uh, we're all excited about some of the data that we'll be seeing presented. Um, I think one of the more relevant things that I would focus on in the meeting is new data that's going to be presented on diffuse large B cell lymphoma. So we've got three randomized controlled trials that are coming to fruition, uh, trying to improve outcomes in diffuse large B cell lymphoma. There's a trial comparing dose-adjusted EPOC R versus RCHOP as primary induction therapy. There is a trial comparing rituximab versus obinutuzumab along with CHOP. Um, and a trial that will be looking at lenalidomide, lenalidomide maintenance after RCHOP therapy. And um, right now it looks like, um, unfortunately, not too much progress is being made. Um, it looks like RCHOP will still likely remain the standard and that dose-adjusted epoch R did not seem to provide an advantage in all comers. I think we'll see some interesting subgroup analyses presented. Right now it looks like obinutuzumab will not replace rituximab, at least for diffuse large B cell lymphoma. And in terms of the value of lenalidomide maintenance, I think we need to see the data that presented a little bit more closely. It looks like there's a small benefit in progression-free survival, but not uh, translating into an overall survival advantage at this point. In terms of follicular lymphoma, I think we will see some standard of care changing uh, information presented. So we'll see the gallium trial presented in the plenary session, which compared obinutuzumab versus rituximab with chemotherapy for patients with follicular lymphoma. And that trial is positive in terms of a significant improvement in progression-free survival to obinutuzumab. So it may actually replace rituximab as the new standard of care for follicular lymphoma. Also, we'll see an update from the Gadolin trial, which looked at uh, the utility of adding obinutuzumab to bendamustine in patients who are rituximab refractory compared with bendamustine alone. And with the longer follow-up that will be presented, we'll actually see not only a progression-free survival advantage to the obinutuzumab, but also an overall survival advantage. So I think that these are you know, very large randomized control trials that will serve to be very informative and some of which will certainly change the standard of care.